Ibn Mas'ud, the famous companion, he said, it is not possible for a person to love the Qur'an and to love music at the same time. It's not possible. So it's not, it's not something, you, you, if you really wish to memorize the Qur'an, you need to live like a Muslim. You need to come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Be sincere, be humble, make dua, leave your sins, live your life by the Qur'an. Look at this beautiful statement. In fact, the actual Arabic says, one heart cannot love music and the Qur'an at the same time. This is what he said. You either have a love of the Qur'an or a love of music. And wallahi, this is so true. This is so true. You find a person who loves the Qur'an, when he hears music, he will feel weird, awkward. He doesn't want to listen to it. He, his heart will become, uh, if you like, and as the Qur'an says, يشمأز, and it will turn, tremble at the, uh, out of fear and out of hatred. Because he loves the Qur'an and he doesn't like to hear the Qur'an of Shaytan. The scholars call music the Qur'an and the Adhan of Shaytan. This is what they call music. On the other hand, a person who loves music, he will never listen to the Qur'an as a person who loves the Qur'an does. Yeah. Music will affect him more than the Qur'an will. Because he has a love for it. Until he gives up that sin and lives his life by the Qur'an, this will be a barrier for him to memorize the Qur'an. I think it's important that Muslims don't waffle on those issues. I think that they should... Um, state them as they are and 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 simply this we believe this is a revelation and there are certain things that are prohibited in the quran homosexuality acting on uh homosexuality is 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 prohibited in the quran the the uh the impulses that people have a, a, a homosexual that was addressed in our books centuries ago the prayer of a person who's known as Ma'boon, who's a, who, who has that condition of being attracted to the same sex, is a valid prayer, even if they lead the prayer. That's mentioned in Maliki texts. But the idea of acting on it, and also just purely rectal intercourse for male uh, and female is also prohibited. It's simply seen as something that harms people. So that, that physical act is, is prohibited. And, and Muslims, I, I don't think, can can change that in any way because it's ma'lum min ad-din taruratan it's known by all muslims and it, it really can't be uh, waffled or fudged Ali, the husband on a general thing doesn't have a right to beat the wife at all so here it says that if she breaks or if she disobeys or breaks sharia the various rules and regulation then even that time you don't beat her for that monitor say it is wrong like you won't beat your son who wants to jump what do you son don't jump you won't give a slap if you go slap, I said, come on, 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 come At least talk. Before they feel five years old, ten years old, tell him, beta, don't jump. Don't hit him. So here, first you admonish. Then, don't share the bed, that means you're serious now. So you may tell your son, don't jump, ma. I'll hit you, warning. Warning or whatever it is, I won't give you four hours. And then as last resort, you may even have to hit him. You may have to tie his hand. Why? Because you love your son. Not that you hate your son. So similarly here, Allah has given permission as a last resort, beat lightly, the Arabic word is zaraba. Beat lightly means ultimatum. This beating is not for hurting the wife physically. شيئا بعض الناس تضع أشياء وهذه أشياء هذا تخاطر خصوصا للبكارة يعني مسألة حساسة وهذا الغشاء يعني ممكن أي عبث به يضيعه ويعرض المرأة للتهمة هتقول لهم أنا كنت والله بعمل كذا مش حيصدقوها ولا بد أن يعني عملت علاقة محرمة مع بعض الشباب ولا بد كذا ولا بد كذا فيعرض الإنسان نفسه لتهمة الزنا المرأة تعرض نفسها لتهمة الزنا يعني فتفضح نفسها وتفضح أهلها. The issue of of uh, creation of images of human beings etc. is forbidden fundamentally because of this. And if we look at those people involved in idol worship throughout the world, the vast majority of the idols which they worship are idols of living beings. You know. Few people worship idols of planets or, or trees, etc. Most of the idols that we're talking about are living beings. And whether it's a human being with an elephant's head, you know, or a monkey's head or whatever, you know, you know, or it's a fish or a dog or whatever, people worship 
idols that are made in the form of hum human beings or animals. And so it has been prohibited across the board. Now, some people may say, well, you know, what's the harm, you know, really? You know, um, if what about people making, you know, we've grown out of this, this, this um, idolatry business, you know, but, um, you know, we, we want to make it for the purpose of our own enjoyment and entertainment, etc. Well, the reality is that the vast majority of the world, or much of the world, is still involved in idolatry. So it's still alive and well today. And furthermore, what it does is it creates this, this uh, love in the minds of people, <clears throat> so much so, that the artists, you know, many times when you speak to artists or you hear artists talking about their works, they will talk about how they're trying to create something greater than life. You know, something greater than life, which embodies something which you can't even find in nature itself. This is their goal. And this is where it's a kind of like of a challenge with the Creator. And this is why, in one of the statements of the Prophet, may God's peace and blessings be upon him, that, you know, on the Day of Judgment, those who are making the images will be asked to bring life back to their images in their challenge to the Creator, trying to imitate the Creator. What it is, is anyway. that there are some habits of this animal which are only found in, in the pig or the swine, which is not found in the animal kingdom in that respect. That it has habits of sort of sodomy, homosexuality. It is normally a vegetarian, but then it will go and eat its um, dead uh, 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 children. Yeah. And, and that is uh, that is a ha habit, and therefore these are found in in the pig and in no other other animal. And the other thing that the Promised Messiah Salam wrote a hundred years ago, he said that whatever you eat will have an effect on you, your body, and your moral si moral situation as well. And physiologists in the world over the last hundred years have published many papers and carried out many conferences on this aspect what you eat that you are and they have recognized the fact that this certainly is the case that whatever our diet is it has an impact not only on our physical nature but on our moral nature and then that as we know that transcends on, on onto our spiritual nature as well so if we are to partake of this animal then our morals will also be affected in this respect so that those evil habits could become a part of our own body, body now, as well. Uh, the ruling regarding urinating while you're standing up, it is permissible, uh, but uh, highly recommended that you urinate sitting down. Uh, but it is permissible to urinate standing up, provided the following uh, conditions are uh, fulfilled. Number one, that your aura, which is your private parts, are not exposed to the other people. Number two, the uh, splashes of your urine will not basically go back to uh, contact your body parts or your clothes. Uh, if you can uh, basically avert and avoid those two, uh, then we say it is permissible to urinate standing up. Uh, even so, it is recommended that you urinate sitting down. Does that These books, as you know, contain references to Jews as monkeys and Christians as pigs. I don't think so. I think well, they do. We've had them independently translated by two independent scholars. Interpretations is different than translations. I think they were verses that were taken from the Quran, and they have to be read in Arabic to be sure. understood properly. I but assure you, they are translations, direct translations, monkeys and pigs. I have read the translations that were sent to me by BBC, and they are not similar to the verse that well, came what would, from you, what would your translation be? Actually, the verse was taken out of context, and the verse refers to a story. Sure. And it has what to be read in What is your translation of the words? Instead of monkeys and pigs, what's your translation? Of? Of the words which we translate, our independent scholars translate as monkeys and pigs. No, the story, it's, you have to read the whole story. You have to know the whole story to really understand Correct. the verse. And I think if, if a verse is taken out of context, then it loses some of its meaning. Louise. Here from Nigeria, she says, what's the ruling of, for the woman who rejects having an intimate relationship with her husband? Any woman who rejects having intimacy with her husband without any legitimate reason, the angels curse her from the time she goes to bed until she wakes up in the morning. SubhanAllah. And Allah Azza wa Jal is angry with her because she has no legitimate reason and the husband 
needs this intimacy. He is exposed to so many things mm -hmm. when he goes out in the street, in the market, at the workplace, and so many uh, uh, fitness around, calling him, luring him to sin. So he has to discharge and he has to have the comfort and the love of his wife. And if he's unable to have this, the reason is this wife who is refusing without any legitimate reason. So she is sinful, she, she is cursed mm -hmm. by the angels, and Allah Azza wa Jalla is not so pleased. If homosexuals want to say, I'm a homosexual, and you must accept homosexual acts as being acceptable and permissible in Islam. I don't see a place for that. Any more than I see a place for, I am an adulterer. And you must make a place for adultery in Islam. The Holy Prophet Muhammad did say, tell people that uh, do not eat with your left hand, eat with your right hand. But on the other hand, he did also say, why you should wipe yourself or clean yourself with your left hand after a call of nature. And uh, it's that if you're not a Muslim, that would mean that you're indiscriminately using the right or the left for anything at all, mm -hmm. whether it's a dirty job or a cleaner job, relatively cleaner job. So it means, and as Dr. Saab has uh, quite rightly pointed out, that even after washing your hands, there are still bacteria and sometimes scary levels of bacteria still left on your hands. Now, if uh, you prefer, you could either have both of your hands in that condition where both of your hands are being used to do th the clean jobs and the dirty jobs, or you could have one hand reserved for the dirty jobs and one for the clean. And this is where Islam steps in. And Islam says that a Muslim, by definition, the word Muslim means one from whom emanate peace. And that means that you can only expect peace from a Muslim. You cannot expect harm from a Muslim or danger from a Muslim. So the hand that the Muslim extends to you is the, as a clean hand, is a, as a harmless hand, whereas the, the hand of a non-Muslim could have been anywhere. مجمع البحوث الإسلامية في الأزهر الشريف عمل جلسة في 14 نوفمبر 1994 ومعي صورة القرار بحبت تغذية تصوريها وزوريها الوريها للناس وريها أكمل قضية خفاض الإناس بعد أن نشرت محطة السي إن إن تقريرا عن ختان إحدى الفتيات في مصر بطريقة بشعة وهو ده اللي أصار هذه القضية الآن خلابة الهاتف لأن الغرب يريد أن يرفض علينا ثقافته وفلسفته يعني ما فيش ختان بشعة وختان غير بشعة الختان ختان آه انتهى إلى ما يلي المجمع انتهى الى ومجمع البحوث اعلى هيئه علميه في العالم الاسلامي بيقول ان ختان الانثى اي خفاضها مشروع في الاسلام ولا يجوز تحريمه الخفاض مش لكل البنات ولكن لبعض البنات مين هن بعض البنات اقول لك بعض البنات انا انا حكيت لحضرتك انا اتصلت بيه مره فتاه ولا استحياء في الدين طبعا اتصلت بيه بنت وقالت لي انا يا دكتور عندما اركب المترو وانا لابسه بنطلون جينز ضيق بيترجي المترو بيها في مصر بتقول لي بتحصل لي حاله اثاره شديده جدا ماذا افعل حسبي الله ونعم الوكيل طبيب انا بحكي لك على اللي حصل وانا اقول الله انا ماليش دعوه بيها هي تقول زي ما عايزه لكن انا سالت طبيب فقال لي فعلا هذه البنت البذره عندها عالي جدا ومرتفع جدا ولا بد من قطع جزء يسير منه اي بنت اي بنت لا بد ان احنا نجيب نوديها لطبيب او طبيبه أيوة. مسلمه متخصصه حاذقه في هذه المساله تقول هذه البنت تحتاج الى الخفاض وهذه البنت لا تحتاج الى الخفاض بنت تحتاج الى الخفاض فنخفض لها وبنت لا تحتاج الخفاض لا نخفض لها لكن انا اجي انكر انكر شعيره من شعائر الاسلام so that's generally how we see restriction as liberation I mean, it's like a child a child wants to do whatever they want but the parent says oh you should do this don't do that do this be careful you're restricting the child Right? Is that, you know, is that restrictive in a bad sense? It's not. You, you know better. Similarly, when it, the human becomes an adult, they're still, in relative terms, a child to how much they don't know about the world. So if there's a God, if there's a revelation, priors, which have to be objectively substantiated, then you can understand how laws are liberating and not restrictive. Can I, can I comment? Sure. Yeah, I mean, I'm so offended by some of the statements there. Um, but what you, you, you really hit it at the end. Yep. Religion treats adults as children. And says that we, that adults, it's absolutely true, we tell children what to do because they're children. But, we, if we're good parents, we realize as the children grow up and become adults, they have to make their own decisions. And we try and train them 
to make good decisions, because that's what good parents try to do. Yeah, just a couple of points. First of did, all, did the prophet order people to be stoned to death? Right. Okay. That case itself was where the woman insisted that she had punishment. There was one case where the woman was, was stoned, and that was when she came to the prophet Muhammad, peace upon him, and said, I have, I have committed adultery. The prophet, peace upon him, turned his face away. She asked him again, I've committed adultery. Only when she asked the third time for a punishment was the punishment insisted on. That is the only she case. She did not have still said no. I beg your pardon? Should he not have still said no? No, no, she insisted, that she, no, she insisted that she be punished. But, but come and the prophet did say that Allah will curse the man who want to be like a woman. The same thing goes to the woman who like to behave like a man, dress like a man. No, you're not supposed to do that. This earring belongs to them, to our sisters, not to you. you know? So if you want to poke anything, you poke other side. Don't poke here. You know? yeah, it's, 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 it's very important. I, I really don't understand what's happening to the men today. No, I really don't understand. Sometimes they do things. Now, even the Jahiliya don't do it. Even the pagan don't do it. No? Now, we should at once dismiss the, the idea that evolution means that human beings are are, are somehow descendants of apes. The, the idea of evolution properly understood does not hold that human beings are descendants of apes. The, the idea just simply says that all life uh, originated from a single origin. Mm -hmm. And in that case, humans and apes are from a single origin. In fact, humans and apes would be the closest sort of relatives on the, on the tree of life. They, they have separated from a single branch uh, some four point six million years ago, uh, which is a long time, and each developed in its own separate distinctive line. So, so based on this hadith, men and women, they all are responsible after they have re reached the age of puberty. According to the fuqaha, for the women, women, she becomes a matured woman when she starts having cycle, <coughs> menses, and for the men, they, some fuqaha speak about the age, they say when they reach the age of 15. Some they say when the mustache is appeared on the upper part of the lips. Or some they say that when a person, a man is ready to marry. And that is we know from the history of the Sahaba that Abdullah bin Amr ibn al-As, he was only 11 years younger than his father. Abdullah bin Amr ibn al-As was only 11 years younger than his father. Which means Abdullah was uh, Amr ibn al-As was married when he was 12 and Abdullah was born after a year. So alhamdulillah there, there is no age limit and we know Aisha Siddiqa radiallahu ta'ala anha which is a very serious hadith which many people have made an issue to understand this that how come Rasulullah uh, have a physical relation with the girl of the age of nine. No, she, that is, we are not concerned about the age, we are concerned that she was physically, she was a woman who can handle that relationship. So alhamdulillah, that way, Aisha Siddiqa radiallahu ta'ala anha, she was a woman and at that time she was only nine years old. So based on that, we can understand that all the obligations for the men and women, it starts at the age when they reach the age of puberty. so, the first thing that we have to do is to do the same thing. If we have to do the same thing, we have to do the same thing. We have to do the same thing. We have to do the same thing. We have to do 
لیکن ہندوستان پاکستان یہ جو بر عظیم پاک و ہند ہے اس کے علماء اس پر مصر گئے کہ اس وہی حکم اس پر بھی ہوگا البتہ انہوں نے اجازت دی کہ سماجی ضرورت کے لیے جائی ہے پاسپورٹ ہے مجرموں کی شناخت ہے امراض کی تشخیص کے لیے میڈیکل بکس کے اندر تصویریں ہوتی ہیں یہ چیزیں جائی ہیں اسی کو ہم نے ایکسٹینڈ کیا ہے کہ اگر ہماری عام سماجی ضرورتوں کے لیے جائز ہے تو دینی ضرورت کے لیے اس سے کہیں زیادہ جائز ظاہر بات ہے کہ جو تقریر کسی کی آپ ویڈیو پر دیکھیں گے آڈیو پر وہ اثر نہیں ہوتا آج کی اصل بات کیا آڈیو ویژوئل آپ کی آنکھ دیکھ رہی ہو اور کان سن رہے ہو دونوں سے مل کر جو بات دماغ میں جاتی ہے وہ بہت گہری ہوتی ہے تو جین کے لیے ہم اسے استعمال کر رہے ہیں عام جو ہے فوٹوگرافی ہابی کے طور پر یا یادگار کے طور پر کہیں لگتی ہے یہ چیزیں جائز ہوئی ہیں میرے لیے Look at this question. I'm not going to read the answer or anything, but just look at the way this person framed this question. He said, I'm a person who believes in the existence of Allah. No matter how far I stray from Allah, I turn back to Him with humbleness. But I listen to classical music, and I think that it is the best thing in my life. It does not provoke desire. Rather, it helps me review myself and my mistakes. I, felt that it's, I feel that Islam is a backward religion when I hear those who say that all kinds of music are haram. Just look at this question. And the Sheikh tells him, you said it's the best thing in your life. And you didn't mention Allah. And you didn't mention the Quran. And you didn't say Islam was the best thing in your life. Look at how it takes over people's lives, people. And he says, it helps me review myself and my mistakes. So the Sheikh said to him, you obviously, it didn't help you review this mistake when you wrote it. <laughs> and he tells me, you feel Islam is a backward religion just because of this. So you see how much now, It takes over people's lives and their hearts. And so they defend it and they tell you, well, it calms you down and it relaxes your nerves. So which calms you down and relaxes your nerves? That or when you have a calamity, you listen to a music or you run and you rush to Allah Azza wa Jal and you beg and you cry to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it's, it's for men and women. Yes. Stoning. Yeah. If the crime is committed by mm -hmm. a man, he should be stoned, okay, stoned to death once the... Uh, circumstances and conditions are met. But Mr. Al Haddad, you can't be serious. You can't be, you, you, no, you're no, you, but you can't be serious. You're saying, I mean, you, you're saying that, that, that men and women can be stoned? Yeah, this is the Islamic punishment, yeah? <laughs> but in we're living in the West. Once, but, 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 uh, once, once the conditions are met, yes. Once the conditions are met, but that's very, very cool. Uh, okay, I'll ask everyone a question. What about if this is the choice of the person himself? No one wants to be stoned. No one wants to be killed. You don't want to be stoned. You don't want to wear hijab. You don't want to become... Do you want to be stoned? Do you want to wear a hijab? Listen, listen. Do you want to be stoned? See, this Do is you not... want to wear a hijab? Give, answer me. Uh, uh, will Just you, answer me. Will you allow me to answer? I'm waiting. Do you want to be stoned? Okay. Will you allow me to answer? I'm so, waiting. Okay, so can you please keep quiet until I answer? Of course. Yeah? Uh, if I committed the crime, if I committed adultery, I like to be stoned. And I can confirm, I can confirm to you. Yeah? And you can put this, I am saying it openly. If I committed adultery, I would request to be stoned. And I can confirm. Job? I can confirm to you. Let me answer. I'm waiting. I can confirm to you that I received so many requests from Western women who committed adultery and they were begging me if they can find a way to a Muslim country to be stoned to death. This is And they're in their, a psychiatric hospital? This is, this is their request. So if that, I'm asking you, If that was her choice, according to your values, which is uh, uh, freedom of choice, according to your values, what's wrong with that? I would send them to a doctor. Okay, you send them to 10 doctors, and still they are insisting on this. A a See, a a they go against uh, even your values. I have you a are contradicting I yourself. Have